Hi everyone, welcome back to the latest episode of Azi News, and here is the news for today, with me, Vanessa. Australian media firm pulled journalists from China over security worries. Two of Australia's leading foreign correspondents in China arrived in Sydney after their rush home for their own safety. China correspondents for the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and the Australian Financial Review Report sought shelter in Australia's embassy in Beijing and consulate in Shanghai as diplomats negotiate with Chinese officials to allow them to leave the country. Uh, I'll just say it's uh, very disappointing to, uh, to have to leave under those circumstances and um, it's a relief to be back in a country with genuine rule of law, but uh, yeah, it's, this was a whirlwind and it's not kind of it's not a particularly good experience, too. The two journalists, ABC's Bill Birtless and AFR's Michael Smith, are banned from leaving China until they answer questions about detained Australian citizen and television anchor Cheng Li. The journalist flew out of China night and arrived in Sydney following what public broadcaster the ABC called an extraordinary diplomatic standoff. Relations between Australia and China have soared this year in the wake of Canberra's calls for an independent international investigation into the source of the coronavirus pandemic. Chinese and Indian Defense Minister discuss border tension in Moscow. Chinese State Councilor and Ministry of National Defense Wei Feng He met with his Indian counterpart Rajnath Singh and urges the Indian side to jointly ease the tensions and safeguard the peace and stability of the China-Indian border. Wei says both India and China should abide by the consensus reached by their leaders, solve problems via dialogue and consultation, urging India to strengthen management control of its frontline troops, not to make provocations or deliberately hype and spread negative information. In the meeting with Singh, Wei stresses capability of safeguarding national sovereignty and territorial integrity, saying not an inch of China's territory should be lost. The two senior officials are meeting on the sidelines of a ministerial meeting of the Shanghai Corporation Organization in Moscow. President Philippines Duterte pardons U.S. Marine who jailed for a transgender killing in Philippines. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte pardons a United States Marine convict of killing a transgender woman in the country nearly six years ago, sparking condemnation from the activist. Correct me if I'm wrong, but ito ang tingin ko sa kaso. You have not treated Pemberton fairly. So, release ko. Lynn's Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton was jailed in the 2015 for killing Jennifer Lode in a hotel in Olangapo near a former U.S. Navy base. Duterte says during a cabinet meeting that Pemberton are treated unfairly and should be released. A trial court signed off on his early release for a good conduct, but the ruling was blocked by an appeal from Lode's lawyer. The killing and the court's release order revived tensions over the role of U.S. military in its former colony. I am not favoring anybody, neither Pemberton, nor the family. Pero, alam mo, itong gobyerno uh, may konting ano dyan, dapa. Kasi sa good behavior, kailan i-compute mo sa lahat, detain siya for the crime, facing trial, and prison siya for the crime. So, it is not the fault of Pemberton. Na hindi na na compute because we should allow him the good character presumption. Kasi wala namang nag-report na Marines na nagsabi na wala siya. The Marines could have reported, if it were otherwise, to the Secretary of Justice or to the police, to the PNP, na itong tao na ito magulo. Duterte's tirades and threats against the United States are frequent and famous, but he has yet to downgrade ties decide against scrapping a bilateral troop deployment agreement central to the Defense Alliance. Filipino artists create viral leaf art portraits during COVID-19. When the coronavirus struck and cost Mary Maidakanai her factory job in the Philippines, she came up with a unique new source of income, turning leaves into celebrity art. No. Stop working. I was living a pretty normal like before the pandemic. Then our company announced that only essential workforce will be allowed. Eventually, we were all asked to stop work. I used to work seven days a week and was forced to work overtime on most days. I also saw this pandemic as an opportunity to take a break and rest. <laughs> The 
Dak and I see her redundancy as chance to enjoy her favorite pastime in art, but at first have difficulty sourcing materials in the country because of strictest coronavirus measures. I wanted to try making art work, but to get art supplies in my town was very difficult because of the strict lockdown. The only way was to buy online, but it was also difficult. I experimented using leaves as a makeshift canvas, and it turned out really nice. Dakana instead picked leaves from a tree outside her home, intricately cutting away tiny pieces to reveal when known faces, from Robert Downey Jr., Oprah Winfrey, to Michael Jackson and even Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. Her artwork on nurses and other coronavirus frontliners quickly went viral on social media earlier this year and she gains thousands of followers on Facebook. Since then, Dakanai has sold hundreds of pieces of her leaf art, each for about 400 pesos or equal to $8. I charge around from 100 pesos or 8 dollars for one leaf art. It used to be just 200 pesos or 4 dollars. I charge higher depending on the amount of details, which makes it more difficult to make. Now instead of working seven days a week at a factory, plus overtime, she says her new venture allows her to enjoy her hobby, take things easier and still pay the bills. Indonesia parades carried the mock coughing to throw busy traffic to emphasize the deadliness of COVID-19. Leading a group of pal bearers with a coffin on their shoulders, officials from Jakarta stop in the middle of a busy intersection and start dishing out advice to the motorists looking at the strange sight. In equal terms to frighten and to educate the public to warn people of the spread of the coronavirus. The official promoting health protocols from Cilandak sub-district office Yanti says always adhere to health protocols for Jakarta and practice new normal in Jakarta. I'm doing this for humanity. It's a tiring job because people in the society do not understand the danger of COVID-19 disease and that it can be fatal. Muliana and his colleagues will dress up in full personal protective equipment, carry the mock coughing and placards to advise residents to adhere to health protocols such as wearing masks and maintaining social distancing. Until now, people are still not aware that using mask is very important. Maybe they will realize the seriousness of the disease after seeing someone carrying a coffin like this. From busy traffic intersections to residential areas, the scare campaign advocating health protocols have received positive feedback from local residents. Now people can understand the consequence. Without this, people will always break the social restrictions rules. According to the local authorities, the daily display are expected for two weeks to run, but maybe extend. We hope that the residents in Jakarta will be receptive to the initiatives that are being carried out. By using the coughing in this campaign, we hope it will frighten the public and increase their awareness. President Joko Widodo says Jakarta is the epicenter of Indonesia's coronavirus outbreak. Malaysia AirAsia aims to raise $602 million to evaluate Japan operations. The chief executive of AirAsia Group Berhard says is looking to raise as much as 2.5 billion ringgit or equal to 601 million by year end and is also reviewing its operation in Japan as the airline seeks to weather the coronavirus pandemic impact on its business. Look at it in the, in the medium term. I don't think it's, it's tenable. Mm. Obviously, I'm a vested interest. In Cambodia, these are all countries in single digits, right? So, I, th I think our strength in COVID is ASEAN. That's our strength. Okay. And that's what I'm going to be investing more of, I as in AirAsia. I don't think, you know, plans to go further afield. What we have, we have. Any more, no way. I think we want to consolidate ASEAN and strengthen ASEAN. And if, if that means one day exiting India and Japan, then so be it. The group CEO, Tony Fernandez, tell Reuters in an interview that the group could raise up to 1.5 billion ringgit or equal to $360 million from bank loans and another 1 billion ringgit or $240 million from investors. The investors include private equity players, strategic partners, as well as conglomerates, both local and foreign. Fernandez also says the group is evaluating its operation in Japan, although its partnership in India remains. As for long-haul arm, AirAsia stands pending aircraft orders. Fernandez says the group is discussing with Airbus to restructure its order book. 
Nearly 300 Rohingya refugees land in Indonesia's Aceh province. Indonesian authorities confirm almost 300 Rohingya refugees believed to have been at sea for six months land in Indonesia's Aceh province. Iptu Irwansia, a local Achenese police chief, says a wooden boat carrying the Rohingya are stopped by local fishermen several kilometers off the coast of Lok Sumawe before landing at Ujung Blang Beach just after midnight. Among them are 181 women and 14 children. They got off from the boat and were walking around. The local residents saw them wandering near a food stall and they, residents, reported to the police. Junaidi Yahya, head of the Red Cross in Lok Sumawe, says the group are being held in the temporary location. We hope they, the authorities, can move them to an evacuation center for Rohingyas where they can stay the night today. But for now, their health, especially related to COVID-19, is our main concern. Boat follows the arrival of another vessel when the local fishermen in Aceh rescue more than 100 refugees, 49 women and 30 children after Indonesian authorities have initially threatened to push them back. Fleeing persecution in Myanmar and already crowded refugee camps in Bangladesh, the Rohingya have four years attempted to seek refugee, mostly by boat, in another Southeast Asian nations. Hundreds of silent students rally to demand school reform. Hundreds of high school students demonstrate in Bangkok to demand reform of an education system that they say is outdated. We are here today to announce our three demands, which are stop harassing students, cancel our curriculum and reform the education system under one condition, that the education minister resigns if he can't reach our goal. The protests begin on Thailand university campuses and increasing challenge to the government with some protesters are also demanding changes to the powerful monarchy. The reason I'm here today with a pride flag is because I'm calling for basic human rights, gender equality or even equality in education. Over 600 students rally outside the education ministry in Bangkok. They call for freedom to be able to speak their mind at schools and the relaxation of the rigid rules on uniforms and behavior. Education ministry Natapol Tepsuan tells journalists he respects students' rights. From what I heard from students, they are interested in reforming the education system. So it does relate to education. The ministry is ready to listen. We, the ministry, listened to them since the last rally, and we are in the process of taking into consideration and fulfilling their demands. Um, he has particularly condemned those who demand reforms to the monarchy, once a taboo subject. A student's parents says the student should know about democracy. My daughter, who is 11 years old, wants me to come here because her friends at school are talking about the bad student group event. In my view, she should know about democracy. <laughs> Students protester says they invite their parents because they want to call democracy of some of the rules at school. I'm the one who invite my parents to come to this rally because I want to call for democracy because some of the rules at my school are old. I want the school to be a place where students want to go, not the place where I feel like I have to pretend to be sick because I don't want to go to school. This kind of the thing will not happen if school were a friendly place. <laughs> Thailand's government released a cartoon drawn by King Mahavajira Longkorn, who spends most of his time in Europe, that portrays a happy Thailand family living in a contented rural life. Typhoon Haisen hits Japan with tight winds and power blackout. Typhoon Haishen drew closer to Japan's southern mainland, cutting power and prompting authorities to recommend evacuation and warn of potentially record rainfall, unprecedented wind, high tides and large ocean swells. In addition, according to the Fire and Disaster Management Agency, authorities urged early evacuation for more than 100,000 households in the southern island prefecture of Okinawa. To all citizens, especially those who are living in areas which have high possibility of having river flooding or high tides, please stay alert on the information from your local authorities. And please take immediate actions such as to evacuate or secure safety to protect your life. 
According to the public broadcaster NHK, one evacuation center in Miyazaki reached capacity and stopped accepting evacuees as a precaution against the coronavirus. Airlines canceled more than 500 flights departing from Okinawa and southern Japan. Bullet train service in southern and western Japan are suspended. The meteorological agency says the typhoon is forecast to atmospheric pressure of 945 hectopascals at its center and sustained winds of up to 216 km per hour. Singapore's concert for the dead goes online. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> The studio lights dim, the band begins to strum, and it's show time for a Singapore Get High concert, a skits and over-the-top costumes to celebrate the death of the coronavirus. Instead of being watched by a live audience of thousands, the performance is taking place in a studio and broadcast over the internet has been live streaming. Get High is traditional gala-like performance held primarily during the Hungry Ghost Festival. The concerts traditionally meant for returning spirits garner a wide audience among the living as well. Before the pandemic, live outdoor get high performance will draw crowds of thousands in Singapore. But due to crowd restrictions to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Of course, I'm disappointed. Every year it's the same feeling. When the Hungry Ghost Festival comes, everyone is very happy. But this year just feels a bit empty. There's no particular atmosphere to it. There's nothing special about what costumes I prepare. This year, the Hungry Ghost Festival is just really dull in this way. The difference to be compared to previous years. Aaron Tan, founder of Lex Entertainment Productions, which specializes in holding Getai performances, says hopes that the live streams will boost his production company's fan base. His company has been live streaming. So we very so we treasure, we really cherish this opportunity. We cherish every single performance we do, because it right now, it's not like the, in the past, where we can just casually come onto the stage. That's not happening. Now, even to get one performance, it's very difficult. So we just treasure everything. We treasure everything. Gete fans hope this show will return to the live stage soon. So Right now with this pandemic, if it ends within this year, I hope the next year that things can go back to normal like before, so we can see the live get high performance on stage and have big banquets too. This will be really lively. I hope this pandemic ends quickly. Chua's company, which specializes in selling traditional Joe's paper and other ceremonial products, says the rituals for this year's Hungry Ghost Festival have also been scaled down due to the pandemic restrictions. And that's all for today. Wishing you and your loved one have a nice weekend and see you soon.